Hello and welcome to a new video. And first let me thank all the very nice people that support this channel on Steady. Today's topic is solving equations with complex numbers. In order to do this, you have to know how you can solve simple equations in the complex numbers. And when I say simple, I mean equations of the form, for example, z to the power of 3 is equal to a fixed complex number on the right hand side. For example, 2 plus 2i. In a descriptive way, you could say solving this equation means taking the third root on the right hand side. Therefore, often people talk about extracting roots when solving equations. Okay, so all the equations we consider here are of this form. So set to a given natural power n, and on the right hand side a fixed complex number, which means a fixed real part and a fixed imaginary part. Obviously this is the first step. You first have to know how to solve such equations before you can solve more complicated equations. Okay, so this is the program for today. Give me all complex numbers set that solve this equation here. First now let's go back to the real numbers. How can you solve an equation maybe of the form x squared equals to a fixed real number? And maybe the easiest one would be 4 here. Now you learned, for example in school, that we have indeed two solutions here. A positive solution I could call x1, which is 2, and a negative solution which we call x2, which is minus 2. So exactly two solutions. And now let's see how this looks like in the real number line. The line represents all real numbers. And now I can put 0 maybe here. And now I see that my two solutions, here x2 and here x1, have the same distance from 0. Also you recognize the order. We have a smaller solution and a bigger solution. Or in other words, we have a positive solution and a negative solution. And now you already know that we can't have this nice order in the complex numbers as well. Because here now we have the whole complex plane. We have the real part on the x-axis and the imaginary part on the y-axis. And the first part we immediately see is, when we have 0 again here in the middle, that we have more numbers that have the same distance from 0. For example, for distance 2, we only have two numbers in the real number line, but immediately infinitely many in the complex plane because it describes a circle around 0 with radius 2. Also, we don't have an easy distinction between left and right as in the number line, so we can't say we have a positive or negative solution here in the complex plane. Hence we need another picture in the complex plane and that is what I will do later. First I want some visualization for this complex number here, so I put this in the complex plane. So we have 2 here and the same way we have 2 here. This means the complex number with real part 2 and imaginary part 2 lies here, so we can visualize this with an error that goes to this point. One important thing I can immediately tell you now is if you have an exponent, so a power of z here, then it's always helpful to rewrite this number on the right. You should rewrite it in the polar form or better in the exponential form. You will see soon that this is indeed very helpful. Okay, so we describe our complex number here now with two things. First, the distance from zero, which means the absolute value, and second, the angle from x-axis to the vector itself. In order to calculate these two things, you can just draw the right angle triangle here, and then you know you can calculate the length of this side by using Pythagoras' theorem. And to calculate the angle here, which I call phi now, you can use a trigonometric function. Most of the time one uses the tangent. Because then you can immediately use the y coordinate and the x coordinate. However, in our example we don't have to calculate at all because we immediately see that we bisect the right angle here. So we cut pi over 2 in half, which means 
we get phi as pi over 4, which means 45 degree. Just as well, we also get our absolute value, which I called r. By using Pythagoras, we know now r squared is equal to 2 squared plus 2 squared, which is 8. Now r is of course the positive solution here, so r is equal to the square root of 8. Now to summarize this, we can rewrite our complex number 2 plus 2i in an exponential form. We have now the number equal to first the absolute value r and then times e to the power i and then comes the angle phi, which is in our case pi over 4. Okay, so this is the exponential form and this is always helpful when you consider powers in an equation. Because calculating with exponents is much easier when you have the exponential function here. In this case then you can just multiply the exponents and then it does not matter how big this power is indeed because you just have to multiply them. Well and now we can solve our equation from the beginning. Still we have set cubed but the right hand side is now much easier. Now my first advice here is that you should rephrase that a little bit. Namely you use the fact that we don't change our complex number if we add a full turn. Which means we add 2 pi to our angle here. 2 pi is the full circle so we end up at the same point in the complex plane. Yeah, we still get to this point by writing this complex number. Or in other words, this is just another representation of the same complex number from the beginning. However, at this point we can do even more, because if we can add one turn, we also can add two turns and even three, and so on. We still end at the same complex number in the complex plane. In short, we can add k turns, so k times 2 pi. Therefore we can choose as many turns as we want, so we can choose our k maybe first as 0, which is this representation from before, or 1 turn, or 2 turns, or 3 turns, and so on. Ok, now before we go further, we should first answer the question, how many solutions can this equation have? There it is helpful to first look back at our real example from before. There we had two solutions for a quadratic equation. Of course we also can consider the equation in the complex numbers, which means we have to add the imaginary axis to our picture here. However, we still stay at two solutions. And what we also find is that all solutions have to lie on the circle around zero, which I told you at the beginning. So this is now the circle with radius two, around 0 in the complex plane. Hence if you search for real solutions you only have two possible points on the real line, namely the intersections with the circle with the line. Ok, one result is all complex solutions have to lie on the circle with the given fixed radius. And the other result is that the solutions divide this circle in same sized pieces. In this example you see this very easily, so this is the first solution, so the arrow to the right, then comes one half turn and then we find the second arrow to the left. So half a circle here and then half a circle here. Hence this is what you can remember if we have the quadratic equation here, the circle is divided in two half circles, so it's cut in half. Now in the, our case with power 3, we know the circle is cut in 3 equal parts. In the same way, if you have a power of 4, you cut the circle in 4 equal parts, and so on. Hence, please remember, the exponent here gives you the number of solutions on this circle. And so when we're here, it's not so hard to see, and let's draw the circle in this case again. So maybe let's put in the assumption that we have found one solution, so maybe this point here. This means that this point solves this equation here. And now we find also all the other solutions, namely there are two. 
because we know the circle is divided into three equal parts. Which means if we go 120 degree here to the left, we find this error. And then we go 120 degree in the positive direction here, and we find this error. Hence, this point and this point is also a solution. If we now go further, so if you add again 120 degree, you end up at the first solution. Here you see the uniform distribution on the circle is a general result that you can always use when you want to generate all the solutions from one known solution. In short, if you have one, you get all the others back then. And you will see that now in our calculation here on the left. In a formal way, we now use the exponent 1 over 3 on both sides. Yeah, and then we find indeed all the solutions. And I will count the solutions with an index k. So set index k is equal to. First we have the square root of 8 to the power 1 over 3. And then the exponential function to the power 1 over 3. However, this simply means that we multiply this exponent with 1 over 3. Okay, so let's rephrase that a little bit even more. So we can write the 8 to the power 1 over 6. So combine the square root with the 1 over 3. And the same way here we do the multiplication. So we have pi over 12 plus, and there we have 2 over 3 pi times k. Well, and here you should immediately recognize our 2 over 3 pi is exactly our 120 degree uh, we saw earlier in our circle here. And maybe you also recognize our first solution here. This is pi over 12, so 15 degree. Uh, this is the angle here. And this makes totally sense because now if you go to the power 3, you have to add up the angle 3 times. So 3 times this angle, you end up by 45 degree which is our original angle from the number at the beginning. So this is indeed our first solution. And we find it if we put k equal to 0. Then we find the second solution if we add 120 degree. So this would be k equal to 1. And if we put k equal to 2, we find the third solution. We could go further, but then you see we don't find any new numbers. Yeah, therefore, we can stop here with k equals to 2. Okay, so all this we should put in a tidy solution in the end. So the first solution, z0, is 8 to the power 1 over 6, which is just the square root of 2. Yeah, That's what you can calculate. But remember, this is just the radius of the whole circle here. And as the first solution, we have the angle pi over 12 uh, plus 0. For the second solution, z1, we have still the same absolute value, but then e to the power i, and now pi over 12 plus 2 over 3 pi. But this one is just 8 over 12 pi, so in sum we have 9 over 12 pi. Then the same holds for the third solution, still the same absolute value, but now we have again to add 8 over 12 pi, which means we have 17 over 12. Now using some colors, you now see the solutions in the complex plane. And first solution with the small angle, then we add up the 120 degree, find the second solution, and the same way the third solution. I strongly advise you to do that after your calculation. So draw a short sketch with your solutions to see if the solutions divide the circle indeed into equal parts. Okay, and the same way, the same thing works for higher powers. For example, now you should know how to solve set to the power of 4 equals to a complex number on the right. So for example, 3 plus 2i. First, we write this number in the exponential form and then do this scheme here. And then you find the radius and the first angle for the first solution. Now, because you know the power, you already know the 
angle between two solutions. You know you need four equal parts in a circle, so the angle is 90 degree. This means with the one exception that the right hand side is equal to zero, you always find exactly four solutions for your equation on this circle. Or in other words, if the right hand side is not zero, the power here gives you exactly the number of solutions. And please note, you don't have such a nice result for the real numbers. However, the good thing is you also see the real solutions then in your picture, if there are any. Okay, now I strongly advise you to do some more calculations with the complex numbers and then you really know how to solve such easy equations with complex numbers. And after this, you can also solve more complicated equations in a complex plane. Then thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye.